If you're having trouble getting pregnant and you want to know which hormones could be causing your infertility, then this is the video for you. Make sure to subscribe so I can help you get your hormones in harmony and optimize your health. And don't forget to click the bell so you'll be the first to see my new videos. Welcome back to The Hormone Healing Show. Today, I'm going to show you the four hormones that you didn't know could be keeping you from getting pregnant. It's sad how many patients I've seen over the past 30 years who spent so much time and money on infertility treatments before addressing their hormone imbalances. Be sure to watch until the end to discover the fourth secret hormone your doctor may be ignoring. If you know which of these four hormones are causing your infertility and address the imbalance, then you'll save yourself a lot of heartache and have a healthy pregnancy. Hormone healing tip number one, raise your progesterone. Okay, progesterone is one of your sex steroids, just one. You make estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, but progesterone is super important. It is the hormone that tells us if you're ovulating. It's also the hormone that will keep you pregnant in the early pregnancy. Let me explain. What happens during your menstrual cycle is that after your period, you have a surge of estrogen and then you ovulate. Only if you ovulate do you produce an adequate amount of progesterone to stabilize the lining so that you can maintain a potential conception, an actually fertilized egg. Now, we, we can measure your progesterone levels. And the way we do that is measuring in what we call your mid-luteal phase, approximately a week before your menstrual period starts. In a 28-day cycle, that would be about day 18 to 22. We measure a blood test, see if your progesterone is high enough. We can tell if your progesterone is at a certain level if you're actually ovulating. And then there's a much better level, a higher level, that will actually al allow you to maintain the pregnancy. Once you become pregnant, the baby's production of placental tissue, the actual making of the placenta within the uterus produces the progesterone to maintain the pregnancy, but that doesn't happen until week 14 of the, of the pregnancy. That is why it's so important that you have enough progesterone for the first trimester to maintain the pregnancy and prevent miscarriage. If you do not make enough progesterone, then your doctor can prescribe for you natural progesterone, either in an injection, either a suppository, it could even be in a transdermal cream that allows your body to actually maintain the pregnancy. Now, how do you make progesterone on your own? How do you try to get your progesterone levels up? Well, progesterone is used to actually become the precursor to stress hormones. The only way to raise your progesterone is to lower your stress response. What happens is, is your adrenal glands use progesterone to produce cortisol, the stress hormone. So if your stress response is really high, your progesterone level will be low. Lots of women have noticed this when they're under stress. Even brides, when they're trying to, get, trying to organize their wedding and their honeymoon around their menstrual cycles, invariably will have their period either on their wedding day or during their honeymoon because of the stress of getting married. So lower your stress response. If you want to know how to lower your stress response so you can make more progesterone, I teach you how to do that on my video on natural remedies for stress and anxiety. I give you three ways to lower your stress response and that way you'll make more progesterone so you can get pregnant and stay pregnant. High insulin levels actually prevent ovulation. Why? Because high insulin levels cause incredible amount of inflammation. And when you're inflamed, because the insulin is actually inflammatory to all of your body cells and the high sugar levels that go with insulin cause incredible inflammation. Your hypothalamus perceives the high sugar levels, the high insulin, and the inflammatory markers as danger. And if your body's in danger, your hypothalamus is not going to let you reproduce. You must be in a safe environment. Your body must be under a low level of stress and those inflammatory markers must be down. In order for you to do that, you've got to get your insulin levels down. Insulin resistance is when your body 
your cells are not allowing insulin to get in. And that is a problem. That allows more insulin and more sugar to float around in your bloodstream. That will prevent you from producing your reproductive hormones. You're gonna have imbalances in your estrogen and your progesterone levels. You're gonna have imbalances in your testosterone and your DHEA levels. You're gonna have imbalances in your adrenal and your thyroid levels. It is incredibly important that your insulin levels drop and your insulin resistance is reversed. We see this particularly in patients that have polycystic ovary syndrome. What that is, is they have very irregular periods. They tend to, but not always, have quite a bit of weight around their middle because they're so insulin resistant. And when they do bleed, they bleed incredibly heavily. They don't get pregnant easily, oftentimes have to go through many infertility workups in order to even get pregnant. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a type of metabolic syndrome and needs to be corrected before you get pregnant. So what you wanna to do to lower your insulin levels and actually improve your inflammation inside of your body is to follow an insulin resistant diet. An insulin resistant diet is one that you eat very low carbohydrates and you eat adequate amount of proteins and adequate amount of fats. You also need to exercise. I explain how to reverse insulin resistance in my last video on insulin resistance. Check it out and try to lower your insulin so you can get pregnant. Hormone healing tip number three, raise your thyroxin levels. Okay, so thyroxin is T4, four iodine molecules. Thyroxin is the main thyroid hormone. If your thyroxin levels are low, your metabolism is incredibly low. A very low metabolism makes it very difficult to get pregnant. Why? If you don't have enough energy for your body, you're not gonna make enough energy to actually maintain your pregnancy, nor enough energy for the baby to develop properly. It is incredibly important that your thyroid hormone levels are within normal limits before you get pregnant and stay within normal limits all during your pregnancy, especially in the first trimester. Your baby's brain is developing in the first trimester. It is feeding off the amount of thyroid hormone that you're making, and that is critical to normal brain development. Without enough thyroid hormone, your baby's brain will not develop properly, may have trouble with learning disabilities later, your baby may even have growth issues. Now, it's really easy to check your thyroid. It is a simple blood test to determine if you're hypothyroid. It can be done anytime. There's no time during the day that is special. There's no time during the month. Get that thyroid checked before you even try to get pregnant. In my video on hypothyroidism and thyroiditis, I teach you natural ways to raise your thyroid hormone. If your thyroid hormone can be raised naturally and you don't need to take thyroid in the form of a medication or in the form of a glandular, you're more likely to be able to get pregnant and to stay pregnant and have a healthy pregnancy. Hormone healing tip number four, lower your prolactin. Prolactation, that is what prolactin has been named after. It is a hormone that you've probably never heard of. Prolactin is oftentimes ignored in infertility work. I have seen patients that have seen top level infertility specialists and have gone through all types of very expensive infertility treatments and their prolactin was high. There was no way they were getting pregnant. Why? Well, let's talk about what prolactin does first. Prolactin actually programs your immune system. It works at night. If you don't get deep enough sleep, you don't make enough prolactin at night. If it flexes over to making too much prolactin during the day, it actually blocks your hormone receptors. Now that is what prolactin is supposed to do. Only pregnant women and breastfeeding women make high levels of prolactin. In the pregnant mother, the high level of prolactin programs her immune system, programs the baby's immune system, and protects mom from the high growth hormones that are actually being produced in order for the baby to grow so the mom doesn't get cancer. So prolactin acts to protect the mother. If your levels are high and you're not pregnant and you're trying to get pregnant, there's no way your sex steroids are going to be able to get into the cells. Prolactin literally blocks them. You can get a blood test to actually determine if your prolactin level is too high. And there is a medication called a dopamine agonist to lower your prolactin. You need to address prolactin if you're trying to get pregnant. 
Now you know which hormones may be causing your infertility, yet getting the rest of your body's chemistry in balance is key to a healthy pregnancy. So I created the Hormone Reboot Training for you to discover how to balance all of your hormones naturally. It's free. Just click the link in the description below this video. So which hormone do you believe may be affecting your fertility? Leave your answer in the comment section below and make sure you sign up for my Hormone Reboot Training. If this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this one. Thank you for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one.